Tom, one of the top issues in this election is also turning out to be quite a marathon race for us as we go state to state to try to win the definition of marriage and get it protected in state constitutions around the country. It's an issue that's getting practically no coverage in the mainstream media, so uh, people are only hearing about it through sources like this. Assess for us where we are right now in the battle for defining marriage as one man and one woman. Well, Stuart, I could not be more proud of the broad coalitions that have developed in California, in Arizona, and in Florida to lead grassroots people, social conservatives, a lot of church people, to get them to the polls to define within the state constitution in each of those three states God's definition of marriage as between one man and one woman. And it, you're right, it's not getting traction in the major media because we have two candidates for president neither of whom is comfortable talking about marriage, Barack Obama, because he really does not give the uh, support to his verbiage saying one man, one woman is appropriate. He doesn't really believe that, I don't think. And John McCain, uh, he's a man who said his greatest failure was the failure of his marriage. So he doesn't seem to be eager to talk about it. So that's why it's not getting traction. As you mentioned, Florida is one of the states that set the epicenter of that battle. Our friend John Stenberger is joining us now via webcam from Florida. He's heading up the effort there to pass a state amendment, an amendment to the state constitution that would prevent what courts have done in Connecticut and California and Massachusetts. Hi, John. Hey, Stuart. It's great to be with you again, you and Tom both. It's good to see you. John, tell us, what's the latest on the battle there? Well, when you said the word marathon, I really uh, resonated with that because we started this campaign in no late November of 2004. And so here almost four years later, we're at the brink of uh, today we're 20 days out from the election. And uh, it's going to be an extraordinarily close race, gentlemen. I mean, um, every vote that is cast in this election, every dollar donated and every uh, volunteer hour is going to make an enormous difference. The polls have us razor close. This, this election could come down to literally thousands or even hundreds of votes. And, and we in Florida are no stranger to close elections, but that's what it's going to be about. What's amazing to me is that the media has totally blurred what the issue is about, T take the talking points of our opponents and just use them, and completely ignored this Connecticut decision, which screams why we need a marriage amendment. I mean, I haven't seen any significant press at all in Florida on this Connecticut decision and everyone's saying well why do you need a marriage amendment because marriage is already protected and it's so disingenuous that they seem to have forgotten that there's a national movement underway by both um, gay activists and and judges who do not understand their limited restrained role uh, to really fundamentally redefine this human institution and then force that upon the rest of society and all the marriage amendment does it's being proactive and saying we're not going to wait around here in Florida until what happens what happened in Massachusetts and California, now Connecticut, occurs. We want to protect marriage for the long run. We want to immortalize it in the, in the, in the Florida Constitution so that we'll never have uh, those situations in the future, as 27 other states have done. Uh, you're, you're facing, uh, w from your opponents, what has now become the normal, uh, the norm for uh, opponents of such measures, and that is they're, they're arguing off topic. They don't want to talk about marriage. They want to talk about just about everything else. Tell us what you're getting hit with. Well, there's two arguments that they seem to be making here. One is that this is going to take away benefits from, from senior citizens, and that's really a pathetic strategy. It's targeting our most vulnerable and precious citizens, our seniors. And so we need to equip all those listening and watching this interview, we need to equip our senior communities that this is just legal nonsense. The Marriage Amendment does one thing and one thing alone. It protects marriage. It takes the existing statute and puts it into the Constitution with no new effect. The Florida Supreme Court approved our language for that very reason. And so it's a scare tactic. The second thing they're arguing, which is stunning, is that this is government intrusion into your private lives. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? I mean, it's exactly the opposite. This is the people of Florida, the only citizens initiative on the ballot this time. All the other amendments are legislative enactments, uh, where the citizens are saying to the government, keep your cotton picking hands out of marriage. Don't mess with marriage. The uniqueness of the, of the Constitution is that most laws rule the people. The Constitution, the law, rules the rulers. And so it's the people of Florida taking and saying, we're going to define marriage and not leave that to politicians or activist judges. John, so the messaging is totally opposite here of what the reality is. John, Florida is a state that has quite a few minority uh, citizens. What kind of resonance does the marriage issue get in minority communities? 
Well, the recent polls show that 65% of black Americans support the marriage amendment, and we are doing activities all over the state, uh, conferences, pastors' meetings, rallies, uh, and we're reaching out to every demographic because, you know, this is not, this is not a Democrat-Republican issue. It's not even a liberal conservative issue. This is a human issue and a moral issue. And it's one which God speaks with crystal clear clarity in the scripture. And so we're finding Asian Americans, Latino Americans, black Americans, uh, young people, old people. Really, this, re this issue resonates with every demographic. The issue is can we get the word out that it's about marriage and not about taking away people's benefits. Uh, and if we can get that message across, uh, we, we will do well. John, one of the things I've been impressed with is you've really pulled out all the stops in, in fighting this fight. You mentioned a few of the things you've been doing, but you've got a, 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 an event coming up on Monday that people should know about. Well, we are very excited that on Monday, October 20th, which is the first day of early voting here in Florida, we are holding a concert and rally for God's design, a statewide concert right here in Orlando at First Baptist of Orlando on John Young Parkway. Um, we're going to have thousands and thousands of people. We're going to pack that mega church, and we have star-studded. We've got an incredible lineup. We've got Ron Cannoli. Um, we've got um, Helen Baylor, Darwin Hobbs. We've got uh, Vicki uh, Yoey. We've got Alvin Slaughter, Generation Letter, a uh, local band right here from Orlando that's getting national attention. So we are very excited. We've, Tony Perkins is coming in from the Family Research Council, Bishop Harry Jackson, Ron Luce from Teen Mania. We're going to have an amazing, fast-paced night. It starts at 6 o'clock p.m., First Baptist of Orlando. And this is a statewide rally for God's design. We're going to have thousands of bumper stickers and yard signs and marching instructions for folks to take this message and these materials and to go back into the state and really uh, do what we need to do to vote yes on Amendment 2 and see marriage protected. All right. And John, we'll uh, make sure everybody knows what your website is. We appreciate uh, hearing from you. We're also glad that you're in the fight. We appreciate it. Tune in to yestomarriage.org. All right. Thanks again, John. Tom, uh, one of the things that, that really is becoming uh, uh, obvious with this is, unless we see a significant change, an unexpected change in the U.S. House and Senate, uh, this is going to continue to be a fight that will be fought at the state level. Well, you're right. Uh, and all of the so-called easy states are done. There is uh, nothing but difficulty lying ahead. And John explained some of that within uh, the state of Florida, how the message is getting uh, uh, booted around in the press. California obviously has a strong opposition to that amendment. Uh, Arizona seems to have a little bit uh, better sailing, at least for now. And um, beyond that, there are a lot of eastern states that have not yet passed marriage amendments. A lot of that is because they don't have the uh, petition process. If something gets onto the ballot, it's only because it's passed in the legislature uh, twice, uh, and it has to be an intervening election. And then if they pass it twice in two separate sessions of the state legislature, then it goes on to the ballot, and that's the situation we face uh, in, on the road ahead. And, and Connecticut uh, just had the ruling that mandated same-sex marriage in that state. Once again, a four to three ruling. So four judges decided for the entire state what the status of marriage would be. How does that play into the national elections this year? What do you see the impact? I, it doesn't seem to have much of a reverberation, but I got to believe that people in the states, particularly those who have marriage amendments on the ballot, the three we've talked about, <clears throat> a mention of uh, the news out of Connecticut will make them think, my goodness, we ought to protect marriage or we're going to become like them. Now, California already is like them with gay marriage on the books, but they're trying to roll that back, obviously. And I, I think uh, in Florida it has to help, and in Arizona it has to help. Anything else you're thinking about this week you'd like to share? Well, um, no, I think the uh, presidential election grinds on. I wish the candidates would talk more about marriage because that would separate John McCain from uh, Barack Obama more, and I'm, I'm just frustrated that they do not. Very good. Thank you, Tom. Always good to hear your comments. We appreciate John Stenberger dropping by this week. We hope to hear from experts in Arizona and California in coming episodes of the Focus Action Election Update. We appreciate your comments. Appreciate your watching. If you would like to write to us, and we appreciate those of you who have taken the time to write, you can send us an email at citizenlink at family.org. We'll be back next week with a new update. And remember, on election night, we'll have a three-hour live video webcast uh, talking about the returns as they come in. Meantime, remember, vote your values.